So as we moved into the 1990s, that's really when uh, we started to have real treatment for patients. Now, AZT was approved in 1987, but the next drug really didn't come along until about 1991. And it wasn't until 1993 that we came up with putting two drugs together, which was the first time we actually saw something improve in patients on a real basis. The mid-90s was a shift for us in terms of having something to offer patients that was real treatment. Um, and that's what we refer to as the cocktail or highly active antiretroviral therapy. But really the concept is that um, one drug worked, but for a very short time. Two drugs worked uh, for a longer period of time, but not very long. Three drugs, that's magic. And with three drugs, we were able to suppress the virus and bring people back to health. Despite advances in treatment and understanding of the virus, society's perception of HIV continued to be closed-minded and stigmatized, proving hurtful to people living with the disease. They had definitely made some strides in the development of medications. So um, nobody wanted to look like they were sick, you know. When everybody started getting healthy with meds and started going to the gym because you didn't want to look like you had HIV. Um, I say that, you know, stigma kills people. It really does. Uh, patients don't get tested, they don't come in for care, and they end up having advanced disease and dying because of stigma. There was a professor at a university, um, a young man in his early 40s, who showed up at our emergency room uh, on New Year's Eve with a change in his mental status. He was confused. He ended up being diagnosed with an AIDS-defining uh, brain infection and died within a month. And this was a highly educated, brilliant man who uh, did not get tested because in his uh, family tradition, you are not gay. And by coming out and being tested, that would um, reveal that that was his lifestyle. So, um, his mother learned of his HIV status. He allowed us to tell his mother, but not his father or his siblings. And as far as I knew, he died of a brain infection. And, and to this day, I think stigma killed that man. My mom had to take me to go get a um, get my uh, physical for my sophomore year, and I had been complaining that I've been sick. And so when we went to the doctor, the doctor said that he was going to run some STD tests. And out of all the STD tests that he said, HIV stood out the most to me. I just remember vividly just standing to the side and a tear rolling down my face like I knew that I had it. I just needed that confirmation. And it was like, um, your daughter's um, HIV test came back positive. And I just sat there and my mom was pacing the floor. And I was like, is you mad at me? I wasn't scared or anything. I was more so ashamed. Well, stigma definitely harms the community because there's no truth behind stigma. So if you're talking about an issue that there's no truth behind, then that's not healthy. Like my father's side of the family, when he told that side of the family, the way they acted around me, it was hard. I was I was more so angry because my cousins and my aunties and them looked at me like a outcast. I was I felt like an outcast. I I I just felt if I would have been given the opportunity to make that choice and decision of who I wanted to tell, maybe I wouldn't have been treated like that. But and if you understood truly behind how you could catch it, you wouldn't be so scared. I had people scared to sit on toilets behind me, or if I drank up out of a cup, they would put the cup up to the side. So when I come over there, that'd be my special cup, things like that, so yeah. 
We still are dealing with stigma just uh, over and over and over again. And um, of course, when we say stigma, we mean that there's this concept that only certain groups of people get HIV, but beyond that, that HIV is transmitted in ways that we know it's not transmitted. So people have that, that fear element still. There's just so many levels of really lack of information. And I think we just have to continue to advocate that, um, you know, this is how it's transmitted, this is how it's not transmitted. Everybody can get HIV, it is not just one group of people. And, um, you know, we, it's common knowledge that every strata of our society has been infected, somebody's been infected with HIV, HIV can, can affect anybody. Uh, but again, we just need to um, sort of de-emphasize uh, de where we have had emphasis previously. Um, one thing I think that doctors can do, other providers can do, healthcare workers can do, is just routinize testing. What I mean by that is just test everybody regularly. And then it becomes part of our fabric of good health care. And through that, we can destigmatize it. Because we tell people when we test everybody that everybody's potentially at risk. So I think that's a, a, a step towards destigmatizing it.